may have looked and sounded quite simple. However, there's a lot behind the simple up and down strumming pattern. And I'm going to explain it so that all strumming patterns from here on out make a bit more sense. First thing to understand is counting. It's going to help us know when to, and more importantly, when not to play. We'll be learning patterns today in simple 4-4 timing and using eighth notes. Um, what? Don't worry. As simply as possible, 4-4 timing is simply counting in beats of four, which most modern pop songs do. And eighth notes simply means we're counting eight notes every time we count four beats. For example, if I stomp out a beat, so we have one, two, three, four, you'll hear one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But we're going to count slightly differently. These eight notes are called eighth notes. And that's simply because there are eight of them in a bar. A bar is our four counts or our four beats. And eighth notes look like this. Standing alone, they can have a little tail or in groups, they can be joined together at the top. Don't worry, it's not absolutely essential to understand how to read notes to play ukulele. But for some, this is really going to help. I'll be providing multiple ways that you can visualize strumming patterns if this is not for you. So rather than counting eights in eights, we actually count one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. You'll notice I'm playing C, a nice easy chord so you don't need to think about it too much or you can mute you can also tap or if you're out in public you can just move your hand and pretend or even visualize studies have shown that visualizing practice can actually be just as effective as playing the instrument for this following exercise I'll be playing C so while counting this pattern one and two and three and four and we call the numbers one two three four the beat one, two, three, four. And whenever we say and, they're the off beats. One and, two and, three and, four and. If I play just the off beats by themselves, they sound like and, 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 and. You can hear why they're called off beats. Getting a grasp of this is essential in moving forward in your strumming. I'm a big believer in practice methods that can be practiced anywhere using your body and or your voice. So here's a great exercise to help you develop your sense of rhythm and the feel of the pulse and the offbeat. And it's quite simple. And it's just stomp, clap, stomp, clap. You just keep that going and think one and two and three and four and. It's especially great practice if you can count either out loud or in your head. You can also slow down this video through YouTube by changing the playback speed in your settings. So up to here, the only thing I need you to absolutely know is how to count one and two and three and four and. If you're still here and you haven't already, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Now the aim of this video is strumming patterns, not strumming technique. If you're looking for strumming technique, you will find it throughout this beginner series. However, just a very quick note on technique, you could use your thumb, you could use your index finger. You could use a combination of your index or thumb. You could use either a felt or a plastic pick or any way that you feel comfortable with for now. As I've mentioned previously, you could even just tap on your body or on your ukulele to develop these rhythms and focus on the strumming later. The most essential thing is building your rhythm. You must be able to do that before you can strum. So now that you know how to count eighths, one and two and three and four and. I want you to know how strumming patterns can be represented. It's handy to know all of these across your ukulele journey as you may come across them in various videos, websites or books. We will start by looking at downstrokes. A downward stroke can be represented many ways. It can be represented as a downwards facing arrow, a D for down, a little hurdle shape, or sometimes you may just have the numbers of the beat. It's handy to know that for simple rhythms, Downstrokes are often on one, two, three, as well as four. So let's practice strumming down together while you look at the different representations and see which one you feel is best for you. Let me know in the comments below. For this, I'll be holding A minor, second fret on the G string closest to my nose. You could choose to also play A minor or simply just mute your strings. I'll count to four and we'll begin. One, two, three, four. 
down. If you'd like, you can take a moment to pause this video and continue practicing those down strums, or you can even keep strumming down as I speak. The main aim of this lesson is to focus on strumming. However, if you're desperate to learn how to strum and change chords, quite frequently chords change on either the one or the three. So I'll show a quick example using A minor and F. I've chosen these chords because for A minor, your finger can simply stay in place and for F, you just place your first finger on the first fret of the E string. A minor for four beats, F for four beats, and repeat. After four, one, two, three, four, A minor, down. Then F, two, three, four, A minor, two, three, four, then F. Keep going, A minor. And F, one more time each, A minor. Chords can also frequently, but not quite as frequently, change on the three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So practicing each of these in your daily routine can be highly beneficial. And you can do this with any combination of chords that you're learning. If you don't know how to read chord diagrams or how to play chords, check out the description below and find a link to my beginner series and see my video on your first four chords. And don't forget to subscribe for future lessons. Just a quick note on notation. We've learned eighth notes already, eight notes that are in a four, four bar. So when we're simply playing four notes, our down strums, they're called quarter notes. And they look like this. Now that you understand eighth notes, quarter notes, and how to count one and two and three and four and, as well as down strums on the beat, we are going to look at our off beats, which are our up strums. These can also be represented in many ways. They could be shown as an upwards facing arrow, the letter U for up, a symbol like a V, or for simple rhythms, they might just be shown as the and symbol. It can feel a little awkward playing up strums on their own. One and, 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 and. So you can choose to either tap your foot on the pulse or you might tap your ukulele. It's like tap and tap and tap and tap and again we're looking at patterns so I'm going to assume that you've looked into technique for up and down strums. If you haven't, go and check out my beginner series from the very start to make sure that you've got all the knowledge that you need up to here. But just quickly, an upstroke is from our toes to our nose. It's commonly said that if you can say it, you can play it. So we're going to say tap and tap and tap and tap and join me and tap and tap and tap and tap. Now let's try that with a C chord. Tap and tap and tap and tap and tap. You'll notice when I tap that the sound stops and that's because my entire hand is muting the strings. In time you can learn a chuck strum, but for now this is a simple alternative. Tap up, tap up, four, one, up, two, up, three, up, four, up, one, and two, and three, and and well done this strumming pattern can be used in many reggae songs or the lazy song by Bruno Mars so up until here we've learned so much we've learned about eighth notes quarter notes counting in eighths and quarters up strums down strums and how they're represented so now we're going to combine them together while counting. Playing eighth notes or a combination of down and up strums for a whole bar can be used in just about any song that you can count in groups of four. But some songs that it sounds especially great in are White Winter Hymnal by Fleet Boxes, Counting Stars by One Republic, and Demons by Imagine Dragons. I'll be holding A minor for this exercise. Try counting out loud if you can. We'll start by I play, then you play, and then we'll play together. So my turn. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and go. My turn again. One and two and three and four and. To 
together. play that up and down strum with confidence while counting you're ready to take your strumming that bit further and while that may have sounded easy and you could have done it without counting the counting is essential from here on to get the most out of this video I want you to set some goals with me I want you to be able to say with confidence that I can strum down on the beat while counting so you can do this by muting your strings and playing along to your favorite song now it might not always be in fours but hopefully you'll be able to get the feel of that so strumming down, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Once you can do that, I want you to be able to say, I can strum up between beats while counting. This is a little harder. To do this, you could practice by muting your strings and playing along to Wait in Vain or Three Little Birds by Bob Marley. You'll actually hear those up strums between the beat. Otherwise, just play along to your favorite song and see if you can count and play on the ands. One, and, two, and, three, and, four, and. Once you have a good grasp of your up and down strums separately, see if you can combine them. Play your eighth notes, one, and, two, and, three, and, four, and, while counting out loud. You could practice this along to the songs Counting Stars or White Winter Hymnal, where you'll clearly hear this rhythm. Once you've mastered these three goals, you can confidently say you can strum up and down to a beat while counting, you can come back and visit me on this channel and start working on part three of this series where we'll get into how to play strumming patterns on the ukulele. If this is your first time joining me today, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you found anything useful in this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps new people see this content and it helps me to grow. And it's a beautiful and really simple way to show your gratitude for this free content today. I want you to know that I have a Patreon page that I'm developing. They can help you to help me to continue this ukulele journey together. Because let's be honest, while I'm incredibly passionate about providing free music education to those in need, I also need to put food on the table for my small little family. I'll do whatever it takes to continue these lessons, but just for a few dollars a month, you can just help make it a bit easier. <laughs> because these videos do take a lot of time and energy, and that's okay. Please know I don't expect anything, but if you can afford just a few dollars a month, it could greatly help me get these videos to you. And as a thank you, you'll get a little bit of bonus content to help you on your ukulele journey as a way for me to say thank you. And if you can't afford those few dollars a month, I completely understand. It can be a stretch by the time you pay a little bit everywhere. You can support me for free by clicking a thumbs up on each video that you watch and by clicking subscribe. And please, if you find this useful, share with your friends. Spread the word and the love of ukulele with me. Don't forget to check the description for extra notes, handy tips and links by clicking that little arrow. And you can visit my channel to see more videos to help you on your ukulele way. Much love and gratitude to you for still being here at the end of this video. I wish you all the very best on this ukulele journey. And thank you so much for sticking with me.